Praise the Lord today, saints. Hallelujah to the mighty King, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's everything. Hallelujah. He's the light of the world. And He's called us into the fellowship of that light. He calls us the light of the world. In Matthew chapter 5, He tells the disciples, He says, You are the light of the world. And you know, today we see the church in the world and it's, it's, it's not very bright, is it? For the most part. For the most part. Father, I pray that you would help me with this message right now, Lord, that you would speak through my mouth and that you would just communicate through the Holy Spirit to the spirit of the listener exactly what you want to say, Lord. And, and Lord, that you would bring the mighty light of your truth to bear upon us today. Upon us all, Lord, and touch your people, Lord, in a mighty way, and help us to see and recognize exactly what you're showing us. Hallelujah. And I pray continually, Lord, that you crush every demonic work that would try to hinder what you want to do in the life of your church. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Now, the book of uh, Isaiah, chapter 6, we have the story of Isaiah. And I was just going to start reading here in verse number eight and then it was like the Lord just gave me this revelation so I'm going to read this and read the whole chapter here okay in the year that King Uzziah died I saw also the Lord I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple you know we could say this too you know we could say in the year that I died in the day that I surrendered I saw the Lord sitting high upon a throne. See, we had the revelation, okay? If you're born anew today, this happened to you one day. You went from darkness to light. You were born anew by the Spirit of God. All of us, at one time, if we're truly born again, we're born, we move from the, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Hallelujah. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings, and with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, 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 hallelujah, is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Remember that day when you got saved? Remember the day and how we praised the Lord and worshiped God in the spirit of holiness. We were so thankful. We had tears running down our face. Hallelujah. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Praise God. The Spirit came in and gave us a new spirit and God came in to dwell. We moved, like I said, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried and the house was filled with smoke. Some of us were trembling. Hallelujah. Then said I, woe is me for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips. See, we realize when God gave us the revelation just how sinful we were. Hallelujah. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Oh, hallelujah. We saw Him that day, didn't we? Yeah. And many days since we've seen the Lord moving. If we're truly walking in the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, saying, Oh, having a live coal in his hand which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. See, it was by the fire of God's love, by the pouring forth of the precious blood of Jesus, that our sin is purged. Hallelujah. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And how many of us, when we got born again, we said, anything, Lord, anything. Oh, I'll do anything, God. I'll go anywhere. I'll do anything. We said, send us, Lord. This is what the church has cried out for years. And he said, go and tell this people. Now, you, you tell me that if the church today, the church as a whole in America, the church in Great Britain and France, the true church, those who are truly born anew, or they claim to be born anew, these organizations of men, you tell me. And he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed. 
but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat. Make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitants, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land, but yet in it shall be a tent, and it shall return, and shall be eaten as a teal tree, and as an oak whose substance is in them, when they cast their leaves. So the holy seed shall be the substance thereof, the holy seed, that tenth, that ten percent. Do you realize today in the church, the professed Christian church of the Lord Jesus Christ today, do you realize that nine out of ten people are not even saved? Do you realize that? You see, darkness when God created the heaven and the earth there was darkness over the face of the deep and the spirit of the Lord moved upon the waters there was darkness and the Lord said let there be light and there was light light dispels the darkness okay if you go tonight when you when you go to bed tonight or maybe you you might see this when you see this it's, it's, it's already nighttime Turn off every single light in your house. Every single light. Turn it off. And just be in your house in darkness. And just stand there. And just look at that darkness. Have your eyes open and just look at the darkness. And then turn one light on and watch the light dispel the darkness. Okay? It dispels the darkness. Light dispels the darkness. It makes the darkness flee. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, we are the light of the world. Is the darkness fleeing? Is, is, is it manifesting? Is the darkness trying to encroach? See, it's trying to overtake. But it can't overtake. Sometimes we think it's overtaking, but it's not. The Lord, he's, he said, we are the light of the world. So therefore, we are dispelling the darkness, but... Is, do we see it happening out in the world? No. Why? Because the world and many professed believers are not really saved. And they, they're, not, they're not walking in the light. So therefore, that darkness that's in them is just its blending with the darkness of the world. It's just one big darkness. See? And the Lord is coming. The, the Lord Jesus is coming to visit His church. He's coming to visit His church. And he's going to see those who are walking in the light. He knows who they are. We have to walk in the light as he is in the light. See? As he is in the light. The light. Transparency. No darkness at all. The light. Faithfulness. Truthfulness. Holiness. You know, the Lord gave me this message Saturday night. We were doing a Bible study with a friend and the Lord put this message on me and the, during the conversation he just dropped this in my spirit the darkness will blend with the darkness but let me tell you something the light dispels the darkness okay and today we have so many people out in the church world in America all these different denominations we have so many people who have absolutely they're blending with the darkness they're compromising the truth. They're ecumenicals. Okay? Every faith all together. This is the darkness mingling with the darkness. Do you realize the religion of man, whether it's Christianity or whatever religion you want to, whatever name you want to call it, it's all darkness. All of it. All of it. I want you to look at 1 John chapter 1. This is so vitally important. We have a testimony on this because we had uh, a person, and I'll call him, I believe he's our brother. I won't tell you who it is because it's not necessary. But he brought 
to us information and asked us about some things in our life and I asked him who, who told him that and he wouldn't tell me I asked him is it someone we know and he said yes I said well tell me who it is so we can talk to them he wouldn't tell me he's dwelling in the darkness he, he refuses to dwell in the light he wants to protect someone who's bringing false accusation against someone else in the body that's dwelling in the darkness you see but the light will dispel the darkness hallelujah and the light of the life of the Lord Jesus Christ in us dispels all the darkness hallelujah we bring the light to bear and here's the light right here in 1 John chapter 1 that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was from the Father and was manifested unto us that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ and these things write we unto you that your joy may be full this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light hallelujah and in him is no darkness at all in God there's no darkness at all so we as professed believers we say God lives in us we are the temple of God hallelujah then why all the darkness why all the communion with darkness out in the world and in the church why is the church communing with darkness communing with the ways of the world and the filth of the world is it because uh, they're, they're trying to make the darkness light? No, the light dispels the darkness. Or is it because they're not really saved and filled with the Spirit of God? Jesus wasn't worried about what the Roman army was doing. He wasn't worried about what the Caesars were doing. Jesus had boldness. He spoke. They said, Jesus, is it all right to pay, do we have to pay tax to Caesar or not? He said, give me a penny. They hand him a penny. They said, whose superscription is this? They said, Caesar's. He said, you give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. But you give to God what belongs to God. See, whose image is this? Oh, that's Caesar's image on that penny. That's Caesar's image on that shekel right there. Well, you give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, the money. You give that to the devil. You give that to Caesar. But you give to God, you're made in the image of God, what belongs to God. And when we come to Jesus Christ, we say, Oh, Lord, I want you. Oh, Lord, save me. Oh, Lord, fill me with your spirit. Oh, God, save me from my wickedness. Save me from my sin. And God comes down and boom and hits us and saves us and redeems us and fills us with his spirit. And then we run out into the world. We go out into the world and do what the world's doing. Act like the world, dress like the world, talk like the world, have sports like the world, lie like the world, compromise and cover up people's sins like the world does. Some serious soul searching has to take place because we are in a time, I'm telling you right now, the darker it gets, I'm telling you right now, the darker it gets out in the world, the more bright we should shine. Because Jesus said, we are the light of the world. But you don't see that, do you? You see everybody's compromising in one way or another. We don't compromise here. And we're not afraid to tell you when you're falling and when you're walking in sin and when you're doing what you're doing out there in the world, just like the world. And here we have Halloween coming up this week. And how many Christians are, are celebrating the Devil's Day? Halloween, they're celebrating death. You know why they're doing that? Because they're blending darkness blends with darkness, okay? That's what happens. It blends right in. Darkness, but not light. Light dispels the darkness. Hallelujah. Praise God. Light dispels the darkness. You know, and I, I got this word from the Lord, and then this morning I get Austin Sparks on the devotional every day. And this is like God just, boom, he hit me with confirmation. And that's how God does. Hallelujah. Light dwells with light. Hallelujah. See? In fellowship. There's transparency, like I was saying. 
It says, Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. That's in uh, Second Peter, First Peter chapter 2. And I'm going to read this right now. I'm going to start at verse 1. Peter says here, talking to the early church now in the first century. And he's talking to the church today. But we don't see this in the church today, do we? It says, wherefore, laying aside all malice. Okay? Malice. All malice. And all guile. Guile. Lying. Deception. All malice. Badness. Depravity. Trouble. Evil. Maliciousness. Naughtiness. Wickedness. And all guile. Huh? Decoy. A decoy. A trick. A bait, wild, craft, deceit. Like when your friend comes to you and says, You know, uh, I heard this about you, and, and blah, 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 blah. And you go, Where did you hear that? Oh, for this guy told me. Do I know who it is? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he knows you. He told me this. Well, who is it? Tell me. Oh, I can't do that. I don't want to betray, betray my friend over here. See, that's darkness, saints. That's darkness. You see, that's happening throughout the world today. That's happening in the church. You got gossips gossiping against one another in churches. See, that's darkness. And it's dwelling with darkness. But the light will dispel it. Hallelujah. It's time for God's people to stand up and get some boldness and stand up, okay, so that that darkness can be dispersed and be pushed out. Hallelujah. Praise God. When Jesus walked into a city, what happened? Oh, the darkness was flushed out. <laughs> Yeah, the darkness was flushed out because a light had come. Hallelujah. And Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 5, He said, Ye are the light of the world. It should be the same way with us, saints. Hallelujah. And it is with those who are walking in the true way. Hallelujah. Praise God. Wherefore, laying aside all malice, this is 1 Peter 2, chapter 2, and all guile and hypocrisies, hypocrisies, acting, dissimulation, deceit, hypocrisy, and envies, oh, envies, ill will, jealousy, ooh, boy, and all evil speakings, <laughs> all evil speakings, lay all this aside, all evil speaking, defamation, backbiting, evil speaking, huh, huh, is this happening in the church, come on, why, because people are walking in darkness, <laughs> that's why, he said lay it all aside, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Are you desiring today the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby? Or are you desiring to see who's going to win the Super Bowl this year? Or who's going to win the World Series? Huh? What's your desire? Or when, when is this prophecy going to come to pass? Or what did this person say today or that person? Oh, or about, about this dream or that dream? Are you desiring to know some new thing like the Athenians and the Epicureans? Are you seeking uh, your, your, your light in the world news? Are you seeking your light in money? Are you seeking your light in pleasures of this life? There's no light in any of that, saints. It's all darkness. And when you're constantly looking at that and going to that, it's because there's darkness that's dwelling with darkness. And Jesus, what did he say? Oh, that verse is so so terrible, isn't it? It's a terrible verse, a scary verse. He said, oh, but if the light that is in thee be darkness, oh, how deep is the darkness? Oh, man. We have to really do some soul searching. Ask the Holy Spirit to just take a hold of us and just do what he has to do to make sure we're walking in the light today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look, as newborn babe desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Oh, hallelujah. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also, as lively stones, lively stones, living stones, are built up a spiritual house, and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices hallelujah 
acceptable to God by Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Hallelujah. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense. Oh, yeah. Even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Oh, praise God. Now listen. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of Him. Hallelujah. Who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Out of darkness into His marvelous light. Hallelujah. Now listen to this devotional here. Oh, praise God. Let me let me look down here first before I read this. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, I want to read this devotional now. This is I, I got this word from the Lord about the darkness will blend with the darkness. You know, you see ecumenicalism. You see preachers of old like Billy Graham and other men of God who uh who at one time in their life they preached only one way of salvation and then at toward the end of their life oh there's anybody can make it in it don't matter what you believe and then you see uh, all these religions in the world all the religions in the world every Protestant religion and all the uh, just every false religion peg what we would call pagan religion they're all going down and they, this happened years ago years ago when Pope John Paul II was still Pope and they all bowed down and kissed his ring okay See, that's, that's darkness dwelling with darkness, saints. Okay? Jesus said, call no man on earth your father. Okay? There's only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. The risen Savior. Not no person on this earth. I can pray for you to God. I can pray to God for you. Okay? But only Jesus Christ can wash away your sins. Not me. Okay, I can lead you to the Savior. I can persuade you, if at all possible, to come to the Savior. Even right now while I'm speaking to you, you can repent of the darkness in your life. You can repent of the sin. You can repent of the stuff that you're doing in your life and come into the light. Hallelujah. The Lord is able to save and deliver. Hallelujah. But this darkness out there... The darkness that's in the church is blending with the darkness in the world. Blending. And people are trapped in darkness. And they want life. And this, this is what the Lord showed me earlier this morning while I was praying. He said, the darkness that people love. The people love the darkness. And they love to dwell in the darkness thinking it's light. He said, that darkness, what they love, is going to come upon them. They're going to be in total darkness. That darkness is coming upon all of you who love the darkness. It's going to come upon you. But those who love the light will have light. Those who dwell in the light will, will, will continue to dwell in the light and they will have light. Hallelujah. Our God's a mighty God. Ye are a chosen generation. This, this is the devotional for today from Austin Sparks website. A royal priest of a holy nation, his own special people. 1 Peter 2.9 and then Austin Sparks, he, he says here, quote, You are a holy nation, end quote. A nation separated from this world unto God. Oh, that's awesome. New birth means that. New birth means that. Oh, that, that that was made clear to all. Right here at the beginning, how utter this thing is. How utter it is. The Lord Jesus left people in no doubt, in no doubt about this. A cleavage, utter and absolute. He would take risk with people. You would probably say, oh, why put them off? Why run the risk of offending them? Why? 
And even the disciples told Jesus one time, they said, they said, don't you know that the Pharisees were offended by what you said, Jesus? See, many of you, you might be offended today by what I'm saying. Okay, be offended. It's because there's darkness in you and the light's trying to come in and you don't want it to come in. So you're putting up a mirror. Okay? You're blocking the light. And it's just like Jesus said. He said, you go into a house, you say, peace be unto this house. And if it's a peaceable house, your peace will rest on it. If not, it'll come back to you. Hallelujah. So here I am preaching the light to you today. The truth of God's word. The truth of the condition of the church. And if you don't want to receive that truth, that's alright. It's going to come right back on me. Hallelujah. Praise God. You want to find some excuse? Oh, listen to his voice. Oh, listen to this. Look at how he talks. Oh, blah, blah, blah. You want to listen to your reason? You want to listen to the lies of the devil? Go right ahead. But listen to what it says here. Jesus left people in no doubt about this. A cleavage, utter and absolute. He would take risk with people. You would not. Okay. You would probably say, oh, why put them off? Why run the risk of offending them? Why discourage them saying, accept, accept, accept all the time? Ah, he was taking all the risk necessary about this because the reality, the awful reality of this, you cannot, you cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven while you cling to this kingdom inimical to God. You cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven while you're clinging to this kingdom of the earth, the kingdom of death. Okay? Hallelujah. In any way, how much, how much the New Testament has to say about this? A walk in holiness that is separate unto God in heart, in spirit, in life from this world. And if we knew it, a very large degree of our education, our spiritual education, and our discipline in the Christian life under the hand of the Holy Spirit has to do with those things in us which are mixed up. See, there's, mix, there's mixture in the church. And we, saints, are the church. All of us. And we have to ask the Lord, search me, O God, and try me. Can we pray that prayer? Can we say this every single day? And do you say it every single day? We do in our house. We pray this every day. I know I do. I know my wife does. We pray this every day. Search me, O God. Search me, O God. Can you pray that? And know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Lord, take the mighty light of your truth to me. Lord, oh God, come in and just search me, Lord. Show me, God. Help me. Because, see, we are a holy people. And that word holy means separate. It means other. It means different. Hallelujah. How much the New Testament has to say about this, a walk in holiness that is separate unto God in heart, in spirit, in life from this world. And if we knew it, a very large degree of our education, our spiritual education and our discipline in, in the Christian life, under the hand of the Holy Spirit, has to do with those things in, in us which are mixed up. In other words, we're, 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 do, we're still doing things. We think it's all right to do this or to do that. And the Holy Spirit comes along and says, no. And he, he instructs us. He chastens us. See, the word chasten there in Hebrews chapter 12 means instruction. It's like in school, okay? And the Holy Spirit's the teacher. Hallelujah. And we must surrender and, and submit to the Holy Spirit. Praise God. The Lord calls, he says here, for distinctiveness of life and testimony. Real distinctiveness of life and testimony. Is our life, dear friends, is your life and my life in this world in our connections and associations and so on quite distinct? No mistaking to what realm we belong? To whom we belong? Do people know we're Christians out there in the world? They should. I remember one time I witnessed to this man <laughs> and uh, I met him when I met the man, 
he was cussing and swearing and I told him I got right in his face and he was an older man he could be my father I said you don't have to cuss like a 16 year old child and he put his fist up he wanted to fight me <laughs> I just looked at him and walked and just got out of his way and said go you know and he just walked in the store and, and uh, he come back out he told me I'm sorry for acting like that I said that's all right sir I introduced myself to him I hugged him I said sometimes you can have a bad day and anything will just set you off and then we began to talk one to one another and it turned out he was Christian scientist well I'm a true Christian okay and I was telling that one day at the table I said I'm a Christian I'm a believer he said I, I, I figured he said I knew that you were <laughs> that's what he said see we're supposed to be different than the world saints we're not supposed to be mingled up with the world no that's the old nature man okay and, and every day we take up a cross and we follow him and he, he takes he takes the principle of the cross dying to ourselves, and he puts to death some other part in us the old nature every day hallelujah the Lord calls for distinctiveness of life and testimony real distinctiveness of life and testimony is our life dear friends is your life and my life in this world in our connections and associations and so on quite distinct no mistaking to what realm we belong to whom we belong no mistaking it or are we mixed in compromising keeping on good terms with this world and its people under the devil's hand if so we stand to lose terribly is there something quite distinctive about our lives that says that man, that woman, that young man, that young woman is utter for God? There's no doubt about it. You see it all the time. They are utter for God. They are not playing at things. There's no compromise with them. Now this sounds hard, but it's necessary. Do you see what's involved? Dear friends, the secret of power is holiness. Hallelujah. It is. The secret of power is holiness. If our lives are powerless, it may be due to this lack somewhere, somehow, of this utterness for God. This separation unto God of some kind of compromise somehow. Somewhere with the prince of this world who's robbing us of our spiritual power and vitality on his own ground the secret of his of power the secret of power is holiness whatever you forget remember that see we have to come out from the world the Lord calls us out of the world in 2nd Corinthians chapter 6 he says be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers but many of the Christian faith today who profess the Lord Jesus Christ are fellowshipping with unbelievers. I mean literally fellowshipping with them. And sitting with them. And high-fiving with them. And, and it's, it's compromise. There's no distinctness of the life of the believer. There's no righteousness there that's shining forth as the mighty light of truth. To bring condemnation, to bring judgment, to bring the justice into the life of the, the, the lost. Because that's what it does. Living a righteous life judges and condemns the wicked. Walking in the way of the Lord Jesus, his whole life condemned all the Pharisees and all the Judaism and everything else. His whole walk. Because they were walking in darkness. They were fellowshipping with darkness. They were one with Caesar. They were one with the world. They did it just like the world. They made God's house a den of thieves. Do you understand that? The devil is the thief. Jesus said he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's what they made God's house, a den of thieves. And today, many in the Christian faith, they profess the Lord Jesus Christ, but they, and, and they say they are the temple of God, but actually they're a den of thieves. And God says to examine yourself today. Say, Lord, you go to God today, and you, you kneel down, and you say, God, take your mighty truth. Take the light of your mighty truth, God, and examine my heart today. Show me, Lord, if there's any wicked way in me. Lord, show me why I'm not different from the world, Lord. And the Lord will come and show you. He will show you. 
the Lord loves his people. All those professors out there, professors with tenure. You know, if you're a professor, if, you, if you're a teacher at a university, okay, you, you go to university, you get a doctorate degree, you get a PhD, now you're a doctor, yeah, and you get a job work teaching at a university, and you work there three or four years, and then five years, and you're about 30 years old, or 35, and they come and they offer you tenure, okay, and, and, and that means they, you, you won't get fired, you'll just have a job for the rest of your life at that university teaching, you have your own room, oh, you're, you're powerful, all the, all the kids are looking up to you, oh, bowing down to you, right, the professor, yeah. That's how many Christians are. They're professors with tenure. They just profess with their mouth the Lord Jesus, but their heart is far from Him. And the Lord says the proof of that is your actions. The proof of that is what's coming out of your mouth. The proof of that is what you really love. Huh? Because many Christians today, they love the world. They love the news. They love to hear all these new things. They love the aliens. They love all this stuff out in the world. They spend all their time on it. Trying to figure out the time that Jesus is coming back. Let me tell you something. In the Bible, as far as I read, the one who was trying to figure out that time, well, let me just say this. First, Simeon was looking for the Messiah. And the Holy Spirit told Simeon, he said, you'll see the salvation before you die, Simeon. Well, here's Simeon. He's about 90 years old. He's in the temple. And the Holy Spirit said, go to the temple. And he went and he saw that little child. He saw that little babe and he said, Oh, I've seen your salvation. Hallelujah. See? So God will reveal to us the time. It comes by revelation. But to figure it out. Okay. Now, there are, there's another part in the scripture where the Lord specifically told his prophet Jeremiah, Seventy years are determined. So Daniel knew exactly 70 years were determined because Daniel was a young man when he was taken off to Babylon. So Daniel had kept track of the years. And so he knew it was, it was near. Hallelujah. Okay. But when Jesus ascended to heaven, it said, he said, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons. Hallelujah. It's not for you to know the times or the seasons. He says, don't be occupied with that. Okay. You do what I tell you to do today. You, you will not be caught off guard. That's what Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We're to keep our focus on the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Not on the world. Not on the news of the world. Because the devil has so many people hoodwinked. You see those Christian pastors out there today. You see them on YouTube. You see them with their websites. And they all have these little news studios set up behind them. Looking like big screens behind them. Like they got this big $20,000 news studio. Or fifty thousand or hundred thousand dollar news studio behind them, and it's all a big game, and they're just keeping your minds occupied with the world, occupied with the devil. Oh yeah, they'll give you a hundred, they'll give you an hour sermon, they'll give you an hour and a half, and in within that hour and a half, you get five or ten minutes of the gospel, and the rest of it's all about the devil and about the flesh of this world, and about what the devil's doing, and about the, the devil's going to take over, oh yeah, and about the false teaching that's out there, about you're going to be taken out of here, you won't have to go through great tribulation, saint, that's what they tell you, see, and that's totally 180 degrees opposite of what Jesus said in John chapter 16, he said, in the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world, hallelujah. So how many people are going to be trapped in these cities and they're going to be in such fear because they've been dwelling in the darkness, see? And that darkness is going to come upon you, I'm telling you. If you keep dwelling in the darkness, you're going to be filled with darkness. You, the light in you is darkness. How deep is the darkness? Come into the light today. Make a clean sweep. Call upon the Lord. Come to the Lord today. And say, God, remove all darkness out of me. Make me separate, Lord. Say, make me separate from this world and from the ways of this world. And then walk in the light as He is in the light. And then we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ, cleanses us from all sin. Hallelujah. 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 Father, I praise You and thank You for this word, Lord. And I pray that it will touch those You wanted to touch. Let it reach the ears of those whom you know will benefit from it, O oh God, and those 
whom you know, Lord, need to hear this word as one last warning, Lord. I don't know if they'll turn. Only you can turn them, Lord. I can't turn anybody. I can persuade them. Knowing your terror, I can persuade them, God, to turn. Let go of the things of the world. Help them, Lord. Help your church today, Father. Hallelujah, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.